Welcome to Introduction to Percentages. The word percent or percentage means parts per 100. And we use the percent sign, this sign here, to denote a percent or percentage. For example, if there is a 10% chance it will rain today, we use this notation here for 10%, which means there are 10 chances out of a total 100 chances that it will rain today, and therefore we can also express 10% as a fraction as 10 hundredths, which simplifies to the fraction 1 tenth, or as a decimal, 0 0.1. Let's look at a model for 10%. Notice how this large square is partitioned into 100 small squares, 10 of which are shaded, and therefore this is a model for 10%, which we can see is equivalent to the fraction 10 hundredths, which does simplify to 1 tenth, or as a decimal, 0 0.1. As another example, if there's a 25% chance something will happen, that means there are 25 chances out of a total of 100 chances the event will occur, and therefore 25% is equivalent to the fraction 25 hundredths, which simplifies to 1 fourth, or as a decimal, 0 0.25. For the remainder of this lesson, we'll practice converting percentages to fractions and decimals, converting fractions to percentages and decimals, as well as converting decimals to fractions and percentages. To do these conversions, there are two main things to remember. First, a fraction bar means division, and therefore the fraction A over B is equal to A divided by B. And second, a percent is always a number compared to 100, and therefore P percent as a fraction is always P over 100. Looking at our table, in the first row, we are given the fraction 3 fifths, which we want to express as a decimal and a percent. So beginning with the fraction 3 fifths, to convert to a decimal, we divide because a fraction bar means division. 3 fifths is equal to 3 divided by 5. To perform this division, we perform long division. Place a decimal to the right of the 3, move it up to the quotient, and now we can add a zero to the right of 3. And now we determine how many fives in 30, which is six. Six times five is 30. Subtract, the difference is zero. And now we know three-fifths is equal to 0 0.6 as a decimal. And now we need to find the percent, which remember is a number compared to 100. So because three-fifths is equal to 0 0.6, let's write 0 0.6 as a fraction with the denominator of one. So this is equal to 0 0.6 over 1. And now if we write this fraction as an equivalent fraction with the denominator of 100, the numerator will tell us the percent. And because 1 times 100 equals 100, we need to multiply the numerator by 100. And 0 0.6 times 100 is equal to 60. And therefore, 3 fifths is equal to 60%. Remember, the shortcut for multiplying by 100 is to move the decimal point right two places. I do want to mention in this case, though, if we go back to the fraction of 3 fifths, we could have also written the fraction of 3 fifths as an equivalent fraction with the denominator of 100. Because 5 times 20 is equal to 100, in this form, we would multiply the numerator and denominator by 20, which notice does give us 60 hundredths, which is equal to 60%. But this method only works when it's easy to write the given fraction as an equivalent fraction with the denominator of 100, which is not always the case. So writing the decimal as a fraction with the denominator of 1 will always work. Looking at the next row, we want to write 0 0.08 as a fraction and a percent. Let's first write the decimal as a percent. Remember, 0 0.08 as a fraction can be written as 0 0.08 with the denominator of 1. And again, if we write this as an equivalent fraction with the denominator of 100, the numerator will give us the percent. 1 times 100 equals 100, and therefore we multiply the numerator by 100. 0 0.08 times 100 is equal to 8. Notice how we have the fraction 8 hundredths here which is equal to 8%. We could have skipped this work if we recognized that 0 0.08 is read as 8 hundredths, but again, this method always works. 
and now we need the fraction. Well, we know 0 0.08 is equal to 8 hundredths as a fraction, but we do need the fraction in simplified form. We need to simplify out the greatest common factor between 8 and 100, which is 4. And therefore, we divide the numerator and denominator by 4 to simplify the fraction. 8 divided by 4 is equal to 2. 100 divided by 4 is equal to 25. The fraction is 2 25ths. In the last row, we're given 35%, which we want to express as a fraction and a decimal. Remember, a percent is a number compared to 100, and therefore 35% is equal to 35 hundredths. So this is the fraction form of the percent, but it must be in simplest form. To simplify, we divide the numerator and denominator by 5. 35 divided by 5 is equal to 7. 100 divided by 5 is equal to 20. 35% is equal to 7 twentieths. And now for the decimal, we know that 35% is equal to 35 hundredths. And because the fraction bar means division, this is equal to 35 divided by 100. The shortcut for dividing by 100 is to move the decimal point left two places, which gives us 0 0.35. But let's also show the division. We have 35 divided by 100, decimal to the right of the 5, up to the quotient, add a 0, determine how many 100s in 350, which is 3. 3 times 100 is 300. Subtract, the difference is 50, add another 0, bring it down. Determine how many 100s in 500, which is 5. 5 times 100 is 500. Subtract, the difference is zero, giving us a decimal 0.35 or 0 0.35. I will show the formal rules for performing all these conversions, but I think as long as you can remember a fraction bar means division and a percent is a number compared to 100, there's no reason to memorize all the rules to perform the conversions. But if you do want the rules, here they are. Here are the formal rules for converting a percent to a fraction, as well as a percent to a decimal. Here are the rules for converting a decimal to a percent, as well as a decimal to a fraction. And finally, the rules for converting a fraction to a decimal, and a fraction to a percent. I hope you found this helpful.